Hi, it's Amy from Cakes With Faces. Now this was gonna be a video about what I'm looking forward to doing in Japan, but then I thought it'd be much more interesting to get you guys involved and find out what you're excited about doing and see if everyone says the same sort of things and share some recommendations. So I made a survey and I posted it on Twitter, Instagram, and right here on the community tab on my channel to invite you to join in. If you didn't see it, I'm Cakes With Faces on all of them. I'm always posting things about Japan and cute things, my designs and pictures of my hamster kaiju. I didn't know how many people would fill in the survey, but as it turned out, almost 500 of you filled it in. So thank you to everyone who joined in. And it's been really interesting interesting looking through the results. The first question was, have you been to Japan? And this is kind of interesting because I don't know if the people who watch my videos are people who are just dreaming of going to Japan one day, or if they love Japan because they've been there, or if they're planning a return trip, because I do try and cover things that aren't the obvious things you always hear about. And it turns out that about half of you haven't been to Japan, or shall we say, haven't been yet. A quarter of you have been there once and the other quarter is split between people who've been there twice or three times or more. I did think about doing a separate survey for people who've been to Japan and people who've never been because your answers about the things you're excited about probably would be a bit different. But then I thought, no, that'll just be too much to go through and this is just for fun after all. But it is interesting and also useful for me when I'm planning my videos. And the survey is called Dreaming of Japan, so I wanted to include everyone, whether you've been there or not, and whether you're planning a trip or not, because everyone's welcome here at Cakes With Faces. The next question was, in which season would you prefer to visit Japan? Now for me, I would always pick spring because I think it's got the best weather. It's pleasant and warm. Autumn is good too, but for me, I think spring feels a bit fresher. Maybe that's just the times that I picked. For me, I'd avoid cherry blossom season unless you really wanna see the cherry blossoms because that's the busiest, most popular time to visit Japan. So it's gonna be really crowded. I'd rather avoid the crowds and go a bit later in the spring when it's really warm but you don't have the humidity of summer yet. So what did you all say? And the results are pretty much as you'd expect with spring and autumn being the most popular. Spring just slightly takes the lead. They are generally considered the best times to visit Japan weather-wise. In spring you've got the cherry blossoms and in autumn you've got the beautiful colours of the autumn leaves and Halloween. Winter was more popular than summer, twice as popular. I would definitely avoid summer if you can. It's very hot and humid. If you're from a country that's hotter and you're used to the humidity, you might be able to cope with it better though. And there are lots of festivals in the summer and fireworks. If you visit in winter, you can go to snow festivals and see the magical winter illuminations. So really there are special things going on all year round. But the main benefit of winter is it's the off season. So popular touristy places are gonna be much less crowded. Personally, I prefer the warmer weather, but I would visit in winter again. I'm really glad I went to Hokkaido in the winter. I've never seen snow drifts so big. It was such an amazing experience. Even though I hate the cold, it was just so different that I'm really glad I went. The next question was, where are you most excited about going in Japan? And for this one, we're looking at which city or region. I said pick two because I thought most people would probably pick Tokyo. For me, Tokyo will probably always be the part of Japan that I love the most because it's got all the things I love about Japan. But I am always really excited about going to new places too. One of the aims of my channel is to encourage people to go to other places in Japan beyond the popular golden route of Tokyo, Osaka and Kyoto, which is where everyone goes. I think the reason everyone wants to go to them is because they're the places we hear about most often. But there are so many other interesting things to do, but then you can't choose to go somewhere if you've never heard about it. So here's the results. Of course, Tokyo was the most popular with 80% of people picking Tokyo as one of their two choices, followed as you'd expect by Kyoto and Osaka. 
After that, there isn't really a next most popular place. It's a lot more open and comes down to your personal choice of what you're most interested in. So the next most popular one is interesting. It's Hokkaido, which is really somewhere different. It's Japan's winter wonderland with so much snow and those amazing snow festivals. If you want to see more of it, all my videos from Hokkaido are in a playlist on my channel. After that, it's a lot more spread out. Kyushu and Okinawa have 6% each. There's Tohoku on only 4%. And then there are a lot of other different individual answers. A few people mentioned Hiroshima and Miyajima, which is such a beautiful place, definitely recommended. We've got Kanazawa, which is a good alternative to Kyoto. Nara with the Deer Park. The Easy Peninsula, you might have seen my video about why I want to go there. Nagasaki. Takayama, which is where those historic triangular houses are. And actually the city of Takayama looks really beautiful as well. And Chubu, the region in the middle of Japan. Lynn said Nagoya, specifically Nagakute. Now I'm thinking, could that be because of the Studio Ghibli Park by any chance? And looking at their other answers, definitely yes. There were a couple of places I had to look up. Carol P said Toyoka, which is in Hyogo Prefecture on the coast. It looks lovely for all the tattoo friendly onsen and the outdoors. Jade said Nakatsugawa, which is on the Nakasendo Way, which is an old trail that goes between Osaka and Tokyo. It goes through several historic villages and lots of countryside and forests, so you can see all the nature along the way. You could actually get there from Nagoya if you're going there for Studio Ghibli. The next question was, what are you most looking forward to in Japan? It's quite a general question. For me, it's quite intangible. I'm just looking forward to being in Japan and the general culture and how clean it is. The people are polite and the service is really good. And really, at the moment, I'm just looking forward to going anywhere and having a change of scenery and exploring somewhere new. And also the food, definitely the food. I wanted to leave this question open so you could put anything you wanted. I didn't want to be pushing answers on you, but that did make it quite tricky when I was looking at the results because there were hundreds. When I was going through the answers, I kind of wished I'd made it multiple choice. So I tried to categorise them into general areas that seem to be coming up a lot. The most popular was food, of course. Almost a quarter of you said you're looking forward to all that delicious Japanese food. There'll be a bit more about that coming up. It's an important topic, so it's got a whole question dedicated to it. Two questions. In second place, lots of people are looking forward to shopping. We're going to help Japan's economy recover by spending all our tourist yen. In third place, we've got the experience of being there. Lots of people mentioned wanting to experience Japanese culture and just walk through the streets and be somewhere completely different. A lot of you mentioned wanting to soak up the atmosphere and see traditional versus modern Japan and just be immersed in somewhere completely different, which is one of the great things about traveling. Next, we've got Ryokan and Onsen. That's traditional Japanese hotels with hot spring baths. In next place, a lot of people mentioned something to do with anime, otaku culture, Akihabara, Gachapon, arcades, characters, Pokemon, Studio Ghibli, and all of that. And then in equal place, we've got the cherry blossoms, Mount Fuji and the countryside, the scenery and landscapes of Japan. And the rest was a whole mixture of different answers, including particular regions or places people are looking forward to, the bullet train, shrines and temples. Fia is looking forward to visiting a few smaller places outside of Tokyo, Kyoto and Osaka because they've already visited those like Kamakura or Mount Takao. And that's a great idea for a return trip. Once you've done the main places, move on to smaller, less well-known ones. Gemma said they're looking forward to seeing the neon lights at night, maybe even with a little bit of rain so it's really atmospheric. I loved hearing about all your dreams of all these experiences and special moments. This one made me think of this mural that's in my town. It's by Dan Kitchener and it looks just as bright and colourful in real life. It's stunning. If you're into that sort of thing, you should definitely look up his work. 
Jeff, Sophia and Max are looking forward to doing the Shimonami Kaido, that's the cycling trail from my last video. And Bernie is looking forward to the World Saxophone Congress. And why not travel for specific things that you're into? It's your trip. And someone else said what they're looking forward to is just the little things, walking in the quiet morning, the beeping of traffic lights, convini. And those sounds, the traffic lights, the melodies in the convenience store and at the train station, they're just so nostalgic. They get me every time. <laughs> On to the next question. Is there a specific place, destination or attraction that you're most excited about? And in this question, we're looking for a specific place. On my cancelled trip, I was most excited about going to a wasabi farm and seeing a bit more of the countryside and going to see Kamikochi, which is such a beautiful looking place in the mountains. I've not decided if I'll be going there on my return trip whenever I can reschedule. I'm not sure exactly where I'll be going. I think it will depend what time of year it is. But I do still have my Google Doc called Japanning 2020 with the list of all the places I wanted to go. And I've kept adding to it so it's way too long by now. I've also got a list on Pinterest of places that look interesting all around Japan and it's public if you want to have a look through it. You can find the link on cakeswithfaces.co.uk if you go to the blog section there's a post called a thousand plus ideas for things to do in Japan on Pinterest and that's got the link. But maybe you don't need that list because it seems like you guys have got loads of ideas already for places you want to go to. Some of the places that came up a lot were Tokyo and specific places within Tokyo. Tokyo Disney, the Pokemon Center, Universal Studios, of course, for Nintendo World, which opened in 2021. So hardly anyone outside Japan has been able to go there yet. Capsule Hotels, Nara Deer Park, Himeji Castle, the giant Gundam, the Ghibli Museum, the Sky Tree, Tokyo Tower and the new observation deck, Shibuya Sky. I definitely recommend getting a view of the city from any of them. It's just amazing seeing the skyscrapers stretching on for as far as you can see. It's one of the things that really makes you feel like you're there. So they were the ones that came up the most and then there were lots of different, more niche places. Here's a few of them. Laura and a few others mentioned stationery shops. I love stationery too. I've definitely got to check out more of them in Japan. Cuddy and Ravenstorm said wrestling. Claire said the Godzilla zipline where you zoom into Godzilla's mouth. Janelle said the Kurobe Gorge and Alpine route. I'd love to do that too. It's got beautiful scenery that you travel along by various trains and buses. And Pete Oliver said, I want to return to Urashiyama to sit in my bench facing Togetsuko Bridge and stare mindlessly at the river. And it has been lovely hearing about all your memories and all the special things you're looking forward to. The next question is, what Japanese food are you most looking forward to? For me, it would be okonomiyaki, which is probably my favorite type of Japanese food. I've tried to make it at home, but it's just not quite the same. And for some reason, they hardly ever have it at Japanese restaurants abroad. And I don't know why, because I think people would really like it. The sauce is really delicious. It's similar to the sauce you get with pumpkin karaoke. I also really miss all the snacks and sweet treats. Taiyaki, ice creams, melon pan, all the snacks in the convenience store and all the delicious creations at a Japanese bakery, like chewy soft mochi bread. So the winner with 45% of the votes was ramen, everyone's favorite. And in second place, it wasn't sushi. A third of the votes went to snacks and sweet treats. Then very close together, we've got sushi, okonomiyaki and Japanese curry. I'm glad some of you are with me on the okonomiyaki. There was also an other option, so you could add your own favorites. Quite a lot of people said all of the above. I'm sorry, it's such a difficult question. It's too hard to pick just one. Jonathan said Japanese KFC. Sarah and Steve of Miru Japan said Wagyu. Sorry, Amy. That's quite all right. You can have all the Wagyu. You're welcome to it. Fruit sandwiches, got to mention, yay, from Cat Clark. We've got gyoza, yakiniku, karaage fried chicken. Charlotte says crepes. I can get almost everything else over in the UK, but not Japanese crepes. 
So if anyone knows anywhere you can get good ones, please put it in the comments. It does seem like there should be a stall at Hyper Japan or somewhere in London that would do Harajuku crepes. You don't need any special ingredients, you just need a big display with hundreds of different combinations of cream, chocolate, strawberries, custard and cake. Cindy B is looking for somewhere in the UK that does gyu katsu, which is beef katsu. They've only seen it twice outside of Japan in Toronto and Hawaii. Now I am immediately thought of cocoa curry in London but it turns out they only have chicken and pork katsu and the beef isn't a katsu cutlet in breadcrumbs it's just beef in the curry so if you know of anywhere put it in the comments and Bojack says good yakisoba so hard to find in the UK and yes often in restaurants yakisoba is just a noodle stir fry kind of basic option so let's help each other out if you know where there's good yakisoba put it in the comments and lastly, the final question, any restaurants or cafes in particular? Here we're looking for recommendations. I thought lots of people would say Coco Curry and that did come up quite a few times, but there were lots of others as well. There were quite a few mentions for conveyor belt sushi and Genki Sushi, which is sadly closed now, but Uobi Sushi is still around. It's run by the same people and basically exactly the same. And it's just around the corner in Shibuya. And there are lots of other conveyor belt sushi places that are really similar and just as accessible for foreigners. I made a video about them. PJ asked what my favourite conveyor belt sushi place is. It's in Akihabara in Yodabashi Kamura, that's the really big shop by the station, on one of the top floors where all the restaurants are, and it's called Maguro Bito. It's not all conveyor belt, I think they've got a section of conveyor belt and then a section where you just sit at the bar, but either way you order on touch screens and that's my favourite where I thought the sushi tasted best. Lots of people wanted to go to theme cafes, cat cafes and maid cafes and there were lots of mentions for Totoro cream puffs. It seems like lots of you want to try all the cute and themed food. That was something I was excited about when I first went to Japan because there are so many places that are cute and themed and that's something that you don't really find so much elsewhere. They're fun to try and you should definitely have that experience but sometimes it is a bit more about taking photos and the cuteness than the food itself. They're also more expensive and the food is often not as good as elsewhere. It might not be bad, just not the most delicious although it will be the cutest. Paige MJ says, I'm desperate to go to a Japanese bakery for breakfast. Me too, Paige, me too. There were a few mentions of fluffy souffle pancakes and someone said onigiri bongo. I've seen videos about that place too. They make handmade rice balls that are supposed to be really good. I'm sure they're much better than the ones at the convenience store and I do love the ones at the convenience store. Some other places that people mentioned a lot were Ichiran Ramen and Ipudo, both ramen chains. And I'm glad that lots of people mentioned small businesses, local restaurants, and places that aren't chains. Claire B said any local little cafe with good coffee and vibes. Kim Lennon said small local restaurants, they have the best food. And Kawaii Jess said little ramen joints. I really agree with this. When you go to small local places, you can really feel the love that goes into what they do in a way that chains and mass produced places can't really match up to as much as I love Coco Curry. And it's good to support small businesses too. Just the small ramen places, bars and cafes that you stumble across are often the best places, so leave yourself open to discovery. I reckon a good plan is what Lord Nobleheart said in the survey, keeping myself open for gems. Sorry I couldn't mention all of your comments, there were so many, but I tried to give you a summary to give you an idea of what most people said. I might do more surveys in the future to dig into this a bit deeper or look at specific areas. So tell me in the comments if you think that would be interesting, if that's something you'd like to see. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and all the things you're looking forward to in Japan. I love looking through them all and I hope it won't be too long before you can make some of them a reality. Until then, keep dreaming of Japan. It will happen one day and I'll see you not next week, but the week after on Thursday. Bye-bye.